first couple of handful of films when I was really young that affected me were 2001 and The Thing and Tron, you know, things that were a bit heavy for me to see at the time that I didn't fully understand for 2001, for instance, the first time I saw it, I was like eight years old or something, you know, but it stuck with me and it like made an imprint. And so the scope of those type of stories and the, the mysteries that are sort of being explored by those stories are, are, are things that I'll, I'll always be attracted to. I think 15, 16 years old, I started thinking, I, I wanna write music. I was on the track to be a professor. I, I went to uh, school for music composition finished a master's degree and kind of realized in my master's degree I didn't really want to pursue the academic route. So I just switched gears. I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, I just figured I'd move to a city where there was opportunity to explore. I did the audition and I, I, I got on the team and, and we just kind of launched from there and it was like definitely one of the most influential experiences in my professional life because of the massive amount of exposure to things that I didn't have exposure to before, which was uh, recording and arranging live orchestra, orchestrating live orchestra, uh, doing dozens of different genres uh, for animation because Family Guy parodies, you know, almost every style of music there is. They do musicals, they do uh, dance music, like strip club music, they do like game show parodies, they do rock parodies, like I, we had to produce all of that. And then I also got an opportunity to audition to score a, um, a feature film that one of my wife's longtime friends was getting his director debut opportunity, and so I just, he gave me an opportunity to write some demos, like so many composers you know, do, and sometimes you get the film and sometimes you don't, and um, this time I got the film and it was a feature romantic comedy and uh, it was really, really difficult, uh, but Family Guy had actually like given me some good preparation for what to expect, um, and I, you know, I, I referred to needing to have fitness when you're, you know, a film composer because films are very demanding. The sort of story concepts in Hubris Rising revolve around powerful, wealthy, influential institutions or individuals or families um, that exert that influence over their immediate worlds. It's really about people with, with maybe undue influence, but influence, powerful influence and how, how um, and also about how their own hubris, you know, rises up to defeat them in some way or another. There's a piece on Hubris Rising called Conclusions of Grandeur, and that's one of those times where you're gonna sit down and write, out, write that melody out and see it on paper, because you know how it works on paper, because that's the way those types of things have shown up. Or you're gonna, you know, more, you know, with that one, you're gonna walk around, get a coffee, and that melody's gonna start showing up in your head, but you're gonna write it down. Um, because it's, it just feels more native to that format. I, I really love the way the, just the general beat came together in System is Baroque. Uh, and kind of the, the meaty part of that track. I just thought that really worked well. I also thought, Arbitrage has like this kind of, has real brass, but also has this kind of fake hip hop brass line that felt a little bit of a risk to me to do, but Arthur like nailed the integration with what he did. And, and so I, that, that really felt good. <laughs> 